This is verse 56 of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. We're in the midst and actually heading toward the end now of the Bread of Life discourse. Jesus saying some relatively shocking things, I suppose, to the people that originally heard this, speaking of eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And, of course, he has just told them that his flesh is meat indeed, the true food that people need in order to sustain their true lives. His blood is drink indeed. It reminds us, of course, of the conversation with the woman at the well. This is kind of the rest of the story, the other piece of it. So we have flesh, we have blood. It sounds uh, rather uh, shocking language, cannibalistic, and yet, of course, from a New Testament point of view, it leads us to that great truth of the sacramental meal, which seems to at least be to some degree playing into this conversation. But much more than that, it's speaking of the sense in which there is an intimacy connected between the Christian believer and the Christ in whom they believe. Jesus will continue to reiterate this theme along the way, and as we reach verse 56, we see a theme that, of course, especially comes back and is expressed in uh, even more uh, full and complete terms toward the end of John in chapter 14 and following. But here we have this statement, ho, this is the definite article, masculine, singular, nominative, the, and then trogon, from trogo, we looked at this uh, in an earlier verse, it means to eat, but it uh, really emphasizes the mechanics of eating, and you might even render it to crunch or to chew, it has that sort of idea to it, it's really a rather dramatic word to be using in this particular context. Uh, it's a participle, and so it's the present active participle, masculine, singular, nominative. Uh, the eating would be the idea, mu, the eating, and then the mu coming in front of tain sarka. It should have gone behind in the ordinary course of events, so the formula would be tain sarka mu, my flesh. But when the possessive pronoun comes up front, then it lays a little extra stress to it, so the eating my... Uh, tain sarka, my, the flesh, or the of flesh, uh, of me flesh, the eating my flesh, kai pinon, same construction, you'll see the same ending, and this is also a present active participle, masculine singular nominative, pino is the word to drink, and so the eating my flesh and drinking, same idea here, mu tohaima, the of me blood, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, in emoi. The emphatic form of the uh, uh, pronoun here, dative singular, uh, which is normal in, in uh, connection with pr uh, prepositions, usually it will be the emphatic form. So, in me is the idea, mene, from meno, I remain. Uh, this is the third person singular, present active indicative. Uh, in fact, uh, the participles, as we noted, were present active, so the whole statement really has a present tense feel to it. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood in me remains, remains in me, kago, contracting kai and ego and I, in auto, in him. Again, we have the third person pronoun, dative, singular masculine, in him. So, he in me, this one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, remains, dwells in me, and I dwell, remain in him. Uh, one of the most uh, profound and intimate affir affirmations that we find, especially emphasized, of course, but uh, John uh, will say it uh, here and there throughout his gospel. It's mentioned elsewhere in the New Testament, this idea of the indwelling Christ. Christ is in his people. His people are in him. It speaks of a, uh, a an intimacy that really defies full description, but certainly any true Christian believer has some intuitive and subjective sense of the truth of it. And so even though it may be difficult to describe in words, it's certainly not something that is foreign in experience. And that's what Jesus is calling our attention to in this remarkable verse.